Hello! How's it going? Just a short one today, and it's just going to be theoretical. I didn't really have time to code something up for this, but I want to discuss data access patterns for, um, well, data storage patterns, I guess, and data access patterns for data-oriented programming. So let's say we have a set of components, and I'm just, these are just their indices, because I just want to search it. What I've been doing so far is I've really, really been relying on binary search and keeping everything ordered. And in the fully general random access case, that's good. Because how many elements do we have here? Okay, so we've got 11 elements here. So in the binary case, the log of that rounding up is about four. So in the worst case, I would be doing four memory accesses. So I'll say binary, binary search. And in the worst case for a linear search, I'd be looking through all 11 elements. So it looks like this is the winner, right? What are the downsides? Well, one downside is that those binary um, those accesses in the binary search would be scattered spatially throughout memory, which isn't great. And also, we may not even be in a situation where we need that. And also, keeping all the entities in a persistent ordered state means that every time we insert or delete, there are unnecessary overheads versus, you know, just throwing something in there. Anyway, and it may not even be necessary. So let's say, for instance, we have some sort of collision system. So, you know, out there in the world, we have an object and we move the object. In a fully naive case, we would move the object, immediately test whether it can move and then either move it or update or something. But then that turns into like a long, thin execution chain for every object because we've got a bunch of if statements in there. So if we have a bunch of objects which are moving and we know that we're going to be doing that, it might be a better idea to have sort of maybe like a, what am I going to say? Like an update for movement and we just let everything move. Then we check for collisions and then we have like a a response system, like a post update, which resolves those collisions. And the benefit of this is that then we get a set of data for all the objects which have collisions. So let's say for every object here, we, you know, put in a collision query. So we construct a batch of collision queries. Then we have a collision system which looks through that linearly and checks for any collisions. And then like, let's say some of these things have collisions. So what do we have Two, Right. So we've looked through, we've inserted some collision records where collisions have been detected. And because this is, these systems are working linearly through everything, we sort of have a guarantee that things are going to go in the same order. But um, then what we need to do is we need to use that to re-update all the positions, which means that we need some sort of system that will look back here and say, okay, well, where's, you know, the position of, where's the thing corresponding to entity two? And in this case, linear search actually becomes pretty good um, because in the worst case, yeah, we look through everything, but in the best case, we can make a restartable search. So I've got, you know, entity two, I'm going to query my position and I'll start at the beginning and then that's the first element and I get it. But then after that happens, I remember the last position that I was at when I searched. So I get that back and then I'll, yeah, maybe keep that there for now. 
And then when I do another search, I go, okay, well, this was the position of my last hit. Now increment, okay, return that result, and then, you know, keep that. And then, okay, we're going to get another query. So we'll step forward, step forward. So in the worst case, we would have to go through, like, let's say we're here and we're searching for element 84. Well, okay, we'll, we'll go and wrap around to the beginning and keep going. So we sort of go through the whole list anyway. But in this situation, because of the way this was set up, we would have a pretty strong guarantee that these elements are going to be next to each other. And for instance, when I go to search, I'm at 53. If I go to search for 84, I'm not continually restarting the linear search from the beginning. So again, little ranty, short little thing, but the idea of a circular buffer is it's an array of some sort that can keep looking. And then when it gets to the end, it wraps around to the beginning. And the benefit of this is you can implement, you can use that as your back end for your component set and remember the position of the last hit. Oh, and uh, just, a quick, just a quick addendum to that. I forgot to mention the most important part, which is that we don't need to keep these elements ordered by entity. We simply, having them ordered in the order that, it, that they are actually created is a pretty good, pretty good guarantee that they're going to be spatially next to each other. So when we create things, we don't need to reorder everything. We can just throw it on the end. When we delete things, this is a classic pattern. Like let's say I want to delete element 31. I don't need to search through everything. I can just grab the last element, bring it over. And then decrement my size, my size by one. So that element will still be there, but by changing internal state, the size of the array as a variable, we will be ignoring that element at the end that makes insertions and deletings super fast. And it also keeps the properties that we're after, more or less. Because something like this is going to be rebuilt from scratch every frame. So we, yeah. Anyway, so that's it. Um, yeah, have a good one. Bye. Hello. I just want to give a quick little shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters. I'm Community Fund... That's a tough word. I'm community funded. It's how I keep the lights running. Not really, but you know, it's how I... So I really appreciate any and all support. If you can't support financially or don't want to, look, that's totally fine. It's not expected. It's sort of a premium subscription thing. In that case, the best thing you can do to support the channel is to comment. Let me know what you're liking, what you're not liking. I know I do a bunch of things, but I am trying to make the best educational content that I can. So, big thank you to Antonin Caret, Dankil Foles, Declan, Endelon Studios, Isaiah Meyer, Jason Coleman, Mathieu Durick, Moim, Shreyar, and Maxim Shukim. Thank you so much, my dudes. It really does mean a lot. Um, yeah, cheers. Have a good ah, Gonna get hit. Have a good one, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.